Today I've got a really nice 9mm 1911 pistol from TSOS. Uh, you may or may not be familiar with TSOS. They've been around for a little while. The uh, factory, the company, in, is in Turkey. They've recently started importing them as TSOS USA, and they make really high quality stuff. Uh, a lot of you already know that uh, the uh, Turks are really known for making really good shotguns, but they do a really good job on pistols and even rifles. Uh, they do a great job over there. They make a quality product at a really decent price. The pistol I'm looking at here today is a Stingray Carry. It is a commander sized, commander length slide um, with a bobtailed aluminum frame. A lightweight bobtail commander is just the perfect carry size for a 1911. It balances wonderfully in the hand. It's lightweight. You can carry it and it doesn't weight you down. And the, the bobtail, it nestles into your hand really well, which is a really nice thing. But another thing it really does for you, it rounds off the sharp corner on the butt of it. So it really makes it easier for this pistol to hide. You don't have that sharp corner poking out under a shirt or under a jacket or whatever. Rounding that corner makes more difference than you would think it would. When you get this thing up under a shirt or a jacket, you'll immediately see how much easier it is to hide with that round bobtail on it. The Stingray Carry is a high quality pistol. The slide is a forged steel. The frame is a aluminum. The barrel is hammer forged with a ramped barrel on it. The ramped barrel is a big help with the feeding. 1911s are kind of notorious for hanging up when feeding when you're jumping from the separate feed ramp into the barrel throat. Gunsmiths used to have a whole industry of just polishing that feed ramp so it goes into that throat, opening up the throat on it so it would feed like hollow points or something like that. The traditional 1911s are made to feed round nose. The modern 1911s are made to feed anything that, that you can put in it. This pistol does a great job of that. I haven't had any failures to feed no matter what kind of ammunition I've been putting through it and I put a good wide variety of ammo in this thing. The only ammo I've had any trouble with in this thing has been uh, some 9 mm uh, subsonic round nose stuff that I keep around here. It's good stuff, but it was running only about 900 feet per second for a round nose bullet, and it just didn't quite have enough oomph to run the slide back all the way. I had a lot of stove pipes on that, several failures to eject. Uh, that's not a problem with the pistol. It's just the way it's set up. It's meant to run with stouter ammo, which is what you're going to be carrying to defend yourself or your loved ones. This Stingray Carry is a 9mm. There are several 45 options and even 10mm options available if you check them out on TSOS's website. The 9mm is a good choice for a carry pistol because the ammo is easy to get. It's less expensive by quite a bit these days than 45 ammo and certainly than 10mm ammo. It's more readily available at your local gun store because there's a lot of people using 9mm these days. And in modern loadings, a 9mm doesn't really give up anything to the 45. I am a big bore guy myself. I love a 45. I'm a big guy. I like a big bullet. I'm old fashioned that way, I guess. But the 9mm, is, it works just wonderfully for anything like that you're going to want to try to do. The slide, as I mentioned, is forged steel. It's very quality made. The uh, serrations at the rear of the slide it doesn't have serrations on the front for this shorter model but the serrations at the rear of the slide are like scallop shaped and they they're a little bit sharp they're really easy to grab a home to so you can really rack this pistol without any problem the sights are steel in the three dot pattern the front side is dovetailed with the dovetail contour to match the uh the slide that's a nice little touch it looks really nice like that the rear sight is uh, likewise drift adjustable for windage. It's got a set screw in the top of it and it's a two dot sight. It's a Novak ramp style sight and it's really easy to acquire and it's quick to acquire for follow up shots. These are just a really nice basic set of steel sights. The finish, this is a very nice looking pistol. It's business like in appearance, but it's really pretty to look at. The slide is finished in black. The frame, the aluminum frame, is finished in a dark gray Cerakote. Makes a nice little subtle contrast there. The grips on this pistol are really nice to look at. They're black G10 and what they call a sunburst 
texture on these it feels good it looks really neat they uh, it sort of radiates out from the grip back it's really nice to look at but it really feels good in the hand there's just enough adhesion on that so that it doesn't want to jump around in your hand too much and it's cool to look at they're lightweight the grip panel on the port side is relieved so it makes it easier to get to your magazine release it's a nice little touch the magazine well is beveled on this so it's easy to get your magazine smacked into place in a hurry the magazine magazine has a uh, has a bumper on the bottom of it so when you smack it in it's really positive you get that thing smacked in there good speaking of magazines this comes with two uh, 10 round 9 millimeter magazines they're quality magazines they're steel they've got a, a plastic follower they've got a plastic floor plate they're really nicely made magazines I didn't have any problem with either one of these magazines while I was testing this pistol or any uh, regular 9 millimeter 1911 magazine will work in the t-size the hammer is rounded and skeletonized as you see often on pistols it costs a lot more than this one do the uh, grip safety is a upswept beaver tail extended grip safety there's no binding in the hand i've got a pretty big hand i've got no hammer bite whatsoever on this thing works perfectly it's got a big memory bump on it which is really nice if you want to ride the safety down while you're trying to shoot which i do whenever i can but a lot of times when you ride your thumb down a lot of times it doesn't let you press the uh, grip safety enough to let the hammer fall this pistol works wonderfully for that it's really nice grip safety on this the thumb safety also is extended and it's ambidextrous it's steel it's it doesn't have this like the huge mud flap type of levers on it which is what i like i like an extended one that's not extended to increase the width of the pistol there's not a lot of sense in that for a self-defense pistol if you're uh, talking about a competition pistol that's another thing but the safety on this is easy to engage it's positive snaps on and off just wonderfully and it's ambidextrous which is another good feature for a pistol especially at this price point the trigger is a long length skeletonized aluminum unit it's uh it looks nice it feels good the action on this thing the trigger pull is very nice just a little bit of take up till you get your resistance point and then it releases at about two pounds six ounces which is just a really nice trigger on this thing it's crisp it's clean it's precise it's just really a good trigger way better than you would expect for a pistol that only costs a little over six hundred dollars msrp Another thing that TSOS did right on this is the internals of this are Series 70 style. They're not the Series 80. They don't have the little uh, extra safety in there that makes the trigger feel all mushy. The Series 70 internals is the way a 1911 pistol ought to be made. It's plenty safe. You still got your grip safety. You still got your thumb safety. You still got the safety between your ears. You got all that stuff. You don't need a Series 80 safety on one of these things. And I'm really gratified to see that TSOS doesn't fool with those. They also don't fool with the magazine safety, which I always thought was kind of a silly thing. You drop the magazine on this, you put your pistol out of commission. There's no sense in that. You know, it seems like it's been several years since ammo has been reasonably priced and easy to get. And that's one of the reasons why 9mm has become so popular these days, because there's so much of it out there that you can get at a decent price. I recently bought a whole bunch of this 115 grain full metal jacket federal white box stuff. It's really good plinking and practice ammo. Double Taps 147 grain plus P jacketed hollow point load is a dandy self-defense load. It's consistent and it's accurate. For another step up in power and a load you can really bet your life on is Buffalo Boar's 115 grain plus P plus jacketed hollow point. It's screaming out of here about 1400 feet per second. It's really just a high performance magnum level load.
Another great load for social work from the folks at Buffalo Bore is the 115 grain lead free plus P plus. It uses the Barnes TAC XP 115 grain lead free bullet which is a wonderfully designed bullet. It's screaming out of here about 1400 feet per second. It's just a wonderful self defense load from the folks at Buffalo Bore. For carrying the Stingray carry pistol, anything that'll work for a 1911, especially a commander, will work for the TSOS Stingray because it's a uh, standard 1911 configuration. So there's a wide variety of holsters out there for it. I've got a bunch of 1911 holsters. One that I really like is from my friend Rob Leahy at Simply Rugged Holsters in Arizona. This is his CID carry holster, which uh, is just your basic minimalist design it uh, it leaves the top of the pistol exposed leaves the muzzle exposed makes it really easy to carry it, it rides the pistol up high and tight on your belt and it uh, it sucks it in there against your body makes it really easy to hide and it doesn't add anything as far as the bulk of the pistol there's nothing added above or below just this is just what you need and nothing more as with everything simply rugged makes they're high quality they're tough they're just wonderful holes Rob does a great job with them. The CID carry holster starts at $55. You can get them in several different colors, different kind of border stampings and things like that for optional cost. This one here is made from elephant hide, which is an, an extra cost on that, but it looks really neat. The black of it complements the pistol beautifully, and the uh, elephant hide just looks great on it. These are wonderful holsters from Rob Leahy at Simply Rugged Holsters. These pistols should be available now at your local dealer. If you haven't seen one and you can't find one, uh, they are available through Lipsy's distributors. So if you go on lipsys.com and uh, click on their dealer finder, you put in your zip code and they'll give you a list of dealers in your area who can get you one of these. I highly recommend you check them out. These are wonderful little pistols from TSOS USA.